Hello, welcome to Scratch 3 Printing. In this video, I'm going to show you five tips on any cubic slicer snacks to get your slicing up to the next level. Let's scratch today's topic. Any cubic slicer snacks is based off workout slicers, but there are still some people out there that's like kind of new to 3D printing or those people that are like don't really know what slicers to use. Maybe they have any cubic slicers and they're using any cubic slicer snacks. Sometimes companies just take stuff and make it their own because it's open source and make it only compatible with their own 3D printers. Of course, you just want your users to use your own slicer, right? So they made modification here and there, but most of them are like very similar in terms of tools and stuff like that. But in this video, I will show you five tips on any cubic slicer snacks that you may or may not know that exist in these slicers. Some of them I just figured it out like a couple of weeks ago. But enough talking, let's jump over to any cubic slicers next. We are now in any cubic slicers next. Uh, forgive me if there are background noises, my 3D printers are running. You may or may not know this. The first thing is the object button right here. When I first started using this, I did not really know that there's this object button right here. And that is very powerful. Say you have multiple items in here that you want to edit, but you don't want it to apply to everything. You can use the object button and manually the object that you want to change. I just load in a model right here. And let's say, for instance, you have multiple models like this, but you want to edit this model right here. What you can do is you click object and you can individually select the model that you want to edit. And if we go down here, you have a limited amount of things that you can edit down here, but you can edit the quality the layer height and stuff like that. The strength, if you don't want this part to be very strong, you can put the infill like, you know, 10%. Or let's say you want this thing to be fully infill, you can put 100%. And once we do that, I'm gonna slice the plate and let's go for a preview. If we scroll down, look at this. This mod only is the one that we change and it does the full infill. These does like 15% infill and this one does fully infill. That is really cool. I didn't really know this when I first started using um, slicers like these. You can also change the speed. Let's say this one has very much overhang and you want this thing to print a little bit slower. You can definitely change the speed of the outer wall, the inner wall, the sparse infill, stuff like that. You can also change the support. Let's say you don't want this thing to be supported. You can disable this, right? and you go back to the global, you click support, you enable this, let's say, let's just say you put it on auto and let's click slice plate. Look at that. This model right here, it does not have the support, but everything else has the support, which is really cool, awesome. And here's one more thing that was very annoying to me that I just recently figured out by accident. So let's say, for instance, you have four color, right? And you want to change this color to a different one. If you ever try changing color, you know that by clicking this number, it's very frustrating. You need to click like multiple times in order just for the box to like pop out. And I tried that like a lot and it's like so frustrating. Why can the number just pop out? You can, you can listen, right? I'm clicking right now and it's not showing. I cannot change the color. So I figured that you can just press one, two, three, four on your keyboard <laughs> and it will automatically change the color to that number. That is amazing. I did not even notice that that was a feature up until like recently. So it's really cool. You don't have to click this thing and wait for it to pop out because it will never pop out. It takes forever. So now you can just click one, two, three, four, and it's like, boom, look at that right there. It's just perfect color changing. That is amazing. And look at that. Okay, the next thing on the list is variable layer height. So what is that? So let's say you have a model like this one right here. And if you click slice plate, you can see that it has these lines. So once you print this, you can definitely see that there's like layer lines stacking on top of each other. So what we want to do is click on the model, go up to the tools, variable layer height. We're just going to keep the setting normal like that. And if we look at the right hand side here, there's this thing that we can drag. So we click and we drag to about 0 0.08. You can do whatever you want. So I'm just going to do up into that point. And if we look at the bottom right here, it says that variable layer height is not supported with organic supports. So you might say that, what is that? Why can I use this tool ever? This tool sucks. I can never use this tool. I feel you. I get that a lot and I have no idea what this is. But all this is, is that you just need to turn off support. If you do that, um, that error is going to go away and you will be able to get this. So now we're going to click slice plate. And if we look in the model right here, look at that. 
it is very smooth at the bottom here it's like really rough and if we come here this is like so much more layer on top of each other and once you print this out you can definitely see the difference that at the bottom here it's like rough but here towards the middle it's like very smooth and towards the top it's rough again i'm just doing this to show you guys the difference between variable layer heights versus not variable layer height so that is a really cool tool if you use it properly you can really you can get prints really nicely without you know having to send afterwards or making sending so much easier so yeah there you go that's how you use variable layer height Next on the list is auto orientation. This is pretty simple, but still see some people like auto orientate stuff, like manually do it and you know, it's kind of bugging me. So um, I'm going to show you guys how to do it very efficiently. And so I have just loaded these model in here and let's say you, you know, screwed up and you put them here uh, you want them to be lined up and this, you want them to be lined up like this. You want to be a very neat, but you just cannot do it. And maybe you go onto the top, click the move and you position it exactly where you want. Um, yeah, that's going to take forever. So what you can do is on your keyboard, if you are on window, you can click control A and then press A again, auto orientation. Look at that. It just put it very neatly and nice for you. So that's like very, very fast. But another thing is that if you want to auto orientate these, um, you can do it at the top toolbar here, auto orient here. You click this and it will automatically put it to the best position that it think it is. I see some people use a rotation like this and try to put it exactly where they want. Let's say like this, right? But sometimes it does not lock in over here and you know, you might get it to like at an angle like that. If you um, auto orientate this and you don't like the position it is right now, there's another method of doing this. You click on the model on your keyboard, click F, F for face so that these face will pop out and you can click on it and it will automatically um, goes toward that face at the bottom. So F, we can say that. So it's going to be on the side. You click F like that. I don't know why it rotates, but um, yeah, you just click F and then boom, boom, boom. You can just put it any way you feel like fit. That is really cool, right? Auto orientation, auto arrangement, and the face selection where you want your model to face so that you don't have to use the rotation. You don't have to use the move. Be very chaotic. And one more thing, if you want to delete everything, you can control A and then control D and it will delete everything. Bonus tip. Tip number four is printing speed. So I loaded a model in here and if we click slice plate right now, we can take a look at the model here. Um, it's only printed at 98 millimeters per second on the inner wall. So in order to increase that, you might think that, you know, uh, let's just crank this number up to 300 and let's see if there's a difference. Nope, it is still 98 millimeters per second. So in order to increase printing speed, there's a couple things that you need to change. Um, let's go to the filament setting right here. In the filament, you need to change the max volume metric speed. So I'm going to crank it to 16. Click slice plate again. And if we look at this, look at that, it increased to 119, but still not reaching our 300 millimeters per second. Let's go back into the filament setting. The next thing you want to check is cooling. Keep fan always on. That is good. Slow printing down for better layer cooling. If you really want to crank up the speed to as fast as possible, you just uncheck this box and then you click slice pit again. And look at this. It has increased to 197. If you want to print really fast and maybe up to almost this number that you set here, change the max volume metric speed, go into cooling and turn off this setting right here. And that will give you a very fast print time, but this does come with like a quality control. It's not slowing down for better layer cooling. So some part of your model like overhang like this may not have proper cooling and may result in some sagging. But if you just want to crank up your speed as fast as possible, that is the way to do it. Okay, tip number five or the last tip here is text. Not many people know that you can add text inside the slicer but it's very funky. So if you want to do this properly, I suggest do it in your 3D modeling software, not in here. But let's say you forgot and just need to quickly add a name or something like that. Or maybe you download a model online and you want to customize to your liking. You can add the text right here. It's at the very top. You can press T or you can click the T up here in boss. 
and look at that the tool is gonna come up right there but let's say you um accidentally click out like this how would you get the emboss tools text back well maybe you think that you click this but no it just add more right there so yeah like i said it's very funky in order to get this emboss text edit you need to click the model or you go to the object right here and go to the text right here and then go to the text up here the emboss tool and now you can edit your original emboss text right here so let's just uh yeah like that it's going again okay let's edit this scratch you can select your font you can have the height or basically it's just uh, making the text smaller so let's do 6.9 the depth here is how oh my gosh i hate this right it keeps going back the depth here is exactly what it is how deep or how how deep you want the text to be so you can do like five you can do like six millimeter like that we're gonna click slice plate and like that it's gonna have the text pop out i'm gonna change this color to red just so we can see a little bit better you don't necessarily want that because that's like way too much overhang okay let's um move this towards the middle like this you there's a limited amount of things you can do i'm just gonna put the depth at one again you can change this italics small modern whatever you feel like and at the bottom here you can do join which is emboss cut which is deboss which it cuts into the uh, model like this so it's not embossing it's debossing if you want to really add it more you can click events use surface you can use this set position or attention per life uh, the character gaps stuff like that and the bonus how big how thick it is the skew ratio just to make it italic from surface you can do some stuff like that rotation yeah you can do some uh, good things with the text emboss but like i said it's better to do it in your 3d modeling so that you have full control but if you just need to quickly add something you definitely can add it in here just like that well that will be it my five tips on any cubic slasher snacks and i hope you found something useful in these five tips as you saw there the five tips that i gave you guys hopefully you can learn something from it if you did not know them yet hopefully you get it now and you can use them so that next time you are using any cubic slasher snacks and you are slicing you want to do this stuff you can do it you want to do that stuff you can do it and definitely utilize the single object feature that is really amazing if you have any other tips definitely leave it in the comments down below i will definitely read them and would love to gather all those tips and make another video in the future so that we can help people that don't really know how to use this lesser get a better understanding of how to use it so that we all can learn together and we often use a slicer to its max potential. If you still have any questions, leave it in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel because more amazing videos like this is coming. And if you haven't yet become a member of the YouTube channel, it helps me tremendously. And as always, keep on 3D printing.